Do you like coffee? Do you like gourmet coffee? Do you like really amazing gourmet coffee that's a total steal and just happens to be based on a culinary podcast? Well, look no further. The Course Grind Podcast has teamed up with the Mr. G Coffee Company to create the perfect custom blend. Dark is the logo itself with hints of caramel, sea salt, and dark chocolate. It is luxury in a cup at an incredible price. Be sure to check out their site today, mrgcoffee.com, and order some now. This is Bruce Calm from Union Restaurant in Pasadena, California, and you're listening to Sean Rosler on the Course Grind Podcast. Get in there and listen good. Welcome back. This is episode number 94 of the Course Grind Podcast. With you, as always, this evening, host creator, Sean Rossler. How's everyone doing this evening? You know, the show tends to be what one might call potentially formulaic. Chef, owner, artist, and guest, question-based format, some discussion, healthy amount of plugs, and we wrap. Simple, right? And you've heard me have two people on rare occasions sit down for an interview. But have we ever tried for three? Could it be? Can it be? Tonight it is. So strap in, sit tight, shit's about to get a little unhinged, as I'm told my behaviors become in such establishments uh, during my 41-year tenure on Earth, but I digress. Tonight's crew hails from the very main street I grew up frequenting, and back then, age alert, craft beer wasn't even a thing. Fast forward more years than I care to account for, they're holding down the truly innovative craft beer movement, along with insanely innovative and luscious culinary pairings that have made more than just this podcast do a double, triple, or even a quad take and say, in Honesdale? Yes, in Honesdale, and it's only getting better. So since the bench is pretty full, I'll go light with the intro and let them tell us all about themselves, their backgrounds, and how they landed together, as they've quite literally done with the story of their very establishment on Main Street in Honesdale. So ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, our guest this evening, the owner, brewer, and chef of Here and Now Brewing, Elena, Carl, and Ben, respectively. How is everyone doing this evening, their crew? Great. Cool. Good. Good shit. Um, I, I can't say it enough, and uh, you, we're, we're going to kind of take the questions and pitch them around a little bit as they fit, because maybe some are a little more culinary, some are a little more operational, and, and everything in between. But I just want to take a moment straight out and say, you folks are the best thing to happen to Honesdale since probably the Storebridge line. Um, and I'm, gl- I'm glad it's alcohol that made it happen, to be perfectly honest. It, it, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. So, um, you, you, I mean, you guys are truly holding down um, in, in, in an area, and we can certainly get into this, but just because, like, I'm from Honesdale, I've got a little background knowledge there. It, like, Honesdale's not an area that craft beer should, I guess theoretically be taken off in and yet y- y- you you all i mean again between the liquid and the food you're you're destroying it so again i just wanted to upfront and just thank you folks for doing what you do uh, it's been great how, how long have you uh how long have you all been open on main street there in hotel now uh we just had our two year anniversary for beer at our dining room open on main Street. Yeah, man, May the fourth be our. So May the fourth be with you. May the fourth. Look at that. Oh, it's cute. I love it. Um, it now it, it just it, it feels like now. And I, I, again, I have to say because I'm I'm a fanboy of a hometown. I'm a fanboy of craft beer, and so I'm obviously a fanboy of yours. Um, you know, it's something to come home to, and it feels like it's been there a hell of a lot longer than just two years. So. Again, well done. Um, We're going to get into it. Um, Again, because the three guests, different responsibilities in each area. We're going to talk to each, kind of pick each each guest apart a little bit, a little bit differently. And uh, but we'll get the overall feel for just what it is here and now is doing in Honesdale. So for those of you new to the show, those of you with shitty short term memories like myself, starters, mains and afters starters. We're going to talk about where the guests in question came from. Mains, we're going to talk about where they're at, what they're doing, what's the five-year plan, maybe. And after is a little bit more irreverent, a little bit more off the cuff, but no one's been injured in 93 episodes, so I don't see that happening this evening. So without further ado, let's start with Elena. And I'm going to break form a little bit and go kind of like 
question point five, not even question one. Question point five, um, Elena, tell me about what it is you do at Here and Now. Running the class, make sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to do, I guess. That's, That's what I do. It's everything, still trying to find my job description, honestly. It's just been, had a long go. As we said, it's just going with home for longer. I've been working on this place for at least five years now. I mean, we've been open for two, but it took a long time to plan. And then we just, you know, with the building too, just like ripped everything out and like, you know, made it new again, essentially. So that took a while. So it's been, been working on that for a while. Yeah. Um, when we started, the demand was just so intense that we're still kind of catching up to that, you know, and trying to still sure. figure out, like, what we're, we're doing and what we're going for. So it's just constant growth, you know, yeah. and just change and just figuring out what homes I want and need and, yeah. you know, substantial kind of Yeah, and, I mean, you all lucked out with that space. That space is fucking insane. Like, like there's – I without actually going up into the old Cats building and all that kind of stuff, like, I got to believe – and for those of you familiar, for those of you who have driven through Honesdale, um, maybe say like early 90s, Winnegar Electronics, it's, it's that place. It's on the corner of Main and what number street is that, Elena? Seven. Seven. All right. Main and seven. And I mean, it's just a massive building. And I can remember the racks of whatever, whatever in just this kind of, it wasn't a nondescript electronics store, but, it, you know, it was whatever it was for the time. To walk in there the first time, um, you have done wonders with that space. So, w w did you have a background in like real estate or something like that? The background in what? Sorry. A background in like real estate renovation, something like that. No, no. I mean, no, nothing. It just kind of. I mean, I just remember this. I was born and raised here. Never really thought that I wanted to live in Hallsville, but you know, we got for. What was going to be a summer, and I, I worked at a Cooperage project and essentially just really enjoyed town and met a lot of cool people and just kind of kept finding projects and it's not really, we're just making excuses to why I was, wasn't leaving and stuff. And I walked into a base in the main, which is like Sam Green's base, and it was again like another like with Solums, and they just was much different, you know, 10 years ago than it is now, and just looked around like it's just it was gorgeous and just the tin ceilings and walls, and like what you did with it was really cool. and just kind of found this building and it just was, you know, gifted architecturally and stuff and we just spent a lot of time and money into it and it's cool. I mean, even the, like, we said, whatever electronics like that, you know, was the owner previously and he comes in, like Charlie Wagner, like he comes in often and he's like a good customer and like really respects the place in general and we've got a few years names for them and stuff. So I don't know, we just keep the, trying to keep the history with it and yeah, just like you said, we, got, we definitely got lucky with it. I mean, lucky, it was definitely very tough to turn, you know, what was always like a retail space into something, you know, kind of a factory. So we definitely, that took a while, and we're still struggling with it, you know, to like have a brewery and a kitchen and a retail space has been, and a very old building has been tough, but, but you know, again, we're just pretty resourceful, and we're just pretty resourceful in general, so we just need yep. to work and see what we're doing. Well, yeah, and, and you bring up an, uh, an important point there, and this will kind of get into the starter section as far as, like, where, where you grew up, Elena. You and I share the, you know, common thread of being, you know, born and raised in, in, in Honesdale, and it's never, I, I can't, I can probably count on both hands how many people have said, no, no, I'm totally going to hang out in Honesdale the rest of my life. Tim Muir, I'm looking at you. Beyond that... There's not a lot of people who are like, oh, yeah, I'll just hang out in Honesdale the rest of my life. And yet, and yet, and I'm blaming you partially, like, there's a big segment of us now who are kind of playing with that idea because of that renaissance that you folks are instilling. So so let me take a step back. Uh, Elena, you grew up in Honesdale, and here you have this... Um, like it's a common feel throughout the community. Like it's really, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Just, we have a lot of like like local businesses and stuff. Like I feel like we all kind of build off each other. And like if we had a little bit more time, I mean it is tough, you know, just like you put so much time in it just doing what you're doing. But like if we had a little bit more time in a few years, like I think we want to do some fun, like a lot more like more festival things and you know more community wide events. You know, coming up once we once we get our six feet in the ground and stuff. But yeah, no, it's, it's not just it's definitely not just us, but it's it's a fun time to be at home though, definitely. Yeah. But thanks for, you know, throwing that at me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And I certainly don't mean to necessarily, you know, cor corner the attention on here and now. There, there are other things. And I think the Cooperage was really kind of like a big center mass lift that, like, made the town realize there's culture to be had. Let's run with this. Um, 
So, so, so here we are in small town America. For those of you unaware, Honesdale is the birthplace of the American Railroad. And we don't have much really historically beyond that. But now we have this cool cultural um, boutique-y feel to a lot of Main Street. Um, but that wasn't always the case. So Elena, take me back, um, you know, childhood. What were you eating growing up in, in, in Homestead? Like, like what, what, what was fair for the course there? Um, I mean, I, I was, I mean, I was lucky, like, I, I had dinner, you know, at my house, like, you know, pretty often growing up, you get, you know, frequent as well over restaurants. I mean, it, it just depends on where you went, you know, good fair. Nothing super, I, I guess, like, not super, you know, any creative is, like, what you're looking for or something, but. Sure. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I really enjoyed the meals growing up, I mean, actually, like, talking recently, like, the high school lunch and stuff, love their lunch day, they make some really awesome food. Mm -hmm. Unsung yeah. heroes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They they are absolutely hands down the unsung heroes of the yeah. education system. Definitely, I mean, yeah, no breweries around, you know, back in the day. Yeah, yeah, right. right. And so here, and so here, you are making that happen present day. Um, let me kick it over then to Carl. Carl, are you there, buddy? Yeah. All right, Carl. Tell me, what is your title and responsibility at here and now? Um, I'm a junior, and I'm, I'll be honest, and I try and make a deer. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Ooh, he's he's the EB. <laughs> Got it. Cool. And Kurt, where uh, or Carl rather? I'm sorry. Um, where do you hail from? Are are you another home cell native? Yeah, I'm from Hounsdale. Cool. Um, yeah. What got you into brewing? Uh, you, I, and again, I, I hearken back to the fact that, like, here we are kind of in this very, you know, s small town, and yet here's these creative people sprouting up everywhere, left, right, and sideways now. It feels so creative now. What got you there? What, like, what, what led you into brewing in from small town 18431? Um, well, I graduated, moved a few places, took some things up, um, had a friend from here, actually, I was hanging out in Philadelphia, and he got me into brewing, and then um, I had a job where I had to sort of learn about brewing, so that kind of, between that and the friends, like, at the same time, that ignited the passion. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, Carl, t t tell me about what what you ate growing up. Like, what was the... What was the fair? Again, it's a Honesdale fair, but I, I feel like everyone I talk to from, even if you take, like, one town, there's that many different stories. So talk to me about what your upbringing was, Epicurean, culinary, however you want to phrase it. Um, well, my dad, and my, my parents were different from Philadelphia. My dad wanted to grow up food. So um, we kind of had dinners at home most of the time. We went out very infrequently. Um, I don't know, TikToks or whatever it was, Jack Trainers. Jack there. Trainers, there you go. There's, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. Like, we would go out frequently and we just sort of ate at home or stuff like that. That's what's hard for your house. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And, and, and especially, again, you know, I, I think my my time frame might predate you all a little bit. <clears throat> um, but, you know, when you don't have the options, you turn it inwards and you eat at home a, a lot of times. So, speaking of the eating aspect here, Ben. Um, Mr. Mr. Chef, um, executive chef of Here and Now Brewing? Uh, Mr. Doctor Executive Chef. Oh, I like that. A associate Assistant Executive Director. I like it. I like it. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you, <laughs> you do the food good. Um, where do you hail from, Ben? Also a Homestale native or no? No, I'm actually, uh, grew up in Western Massachusetts, uh, Wilbraham, Massachusetts, home of Friendly Ice Cream. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, my favorite thing is Friendly Ice Cream. The whole, the whole, for me, uh, Friendly uh, Ice Cream, the brand, born and raised just like me in Wilbraham, Massachusetts. There you uh, go. came to Homestale via, uh, I went to uh, Johnson Rose. University in Providence, Rhode Island, and I had a good friend who 
new guy that wanted to go to work on a farm, and I came up and visited him and uh, fell in love with the area, and uh, that's what brought me here to Hongzhou. I love it. I love it. And uh, talk to me about what you ate growing up then. What was the Western Massachusetts fair that you came up with? Friendly's ice cream. <laughs> A strict diet of Friendly's ice cream. Yeah, I mean, I, really play the, uh, I mean, I mean, I definitely like. I, I love the, the similarities here with my counterparts of the home cooked meals. Uh, my mother was a great cook. Um, we ate a lot at home as well. We also, like, we used to do, like, being in, uh, growing up in New England, uh, last year, like, parents would do, like, day trips, uh, and just to, like, go get the best burger or hot dog or fried clams, mm. uh, in the area. And, so, like, we, I was like, you know, like, on the weekends to, uh, go out and, and try some, like, very, uh, delicious, like, old school, just New England sort of classics. Um, and then always with the uh, great meals at home with mom, and it was uh, yeah, always well fed. Love it, love it. And here, here you are feeding others and and doing it extremely well. So let's let's fast forward. Here's three, you know, crazy, amazing, creative artists, creators, type people um, that come together. Talk to me about the inception. Uh, of here and now, how did the three of you, and, and I'm, I'm assuming they're a little bit, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, how did the three of you come together and go, hey, you know what we could do? This. How did that happen? Tell me the story. Tell me the the, the marriage proposal, if you will. Um, my wife and Elena have been very tight. Um, so my wife and I both of our interests brought us together over dinner. Um, Chicken parmesan. Chicken parmesan. Delicious. We're out of my basement in the refrigerator, and um, we fell in love. Then we, uh, and then we wrote love notes back and forth to each other for a while. <laughs> Do you like me? Check one, yes or no. Kind of. Yeah. Walked around. Ben was working. Ben, um, he was like, I don't know if you ever went to Diary Forks when that first opened, yes. but Ben yep. was like. certainly has. You brought up an, an awesome quote there, Elena, and I'm going to repeat it. Everyone here drinks Bush. And, and, and I mean, I think if you, you know, real quick view it, everyone's in a tree stand, everyone's got a Bush pounder between their knees, and, you know, they're driving 85 through a snowstorm with a Winston hanging out the corner of their mouth. You, you, I, we can paint that picture. And yet, here we are, and every time I come home, my wife's first thing is like, all right, get the kids to bed, we're going to here and now. Like it's, and, and, and I mean, you know, we, we like to go out. We like to sample different things. Like there's no other place right now that's doing that. And so, and, and it's always packed. I think that's the point I want to get to. How, how has the, uh, how has the customer flow been? It doesn't seem like it's let up at all for you guys. No, no, definitely not. I mean, we're a very, that's like something I think he needs to, just like we are a very local restaurant, you know, but we're also a brewery, so we get, we kind of get both, you know, both sides of the traffic, and I, we don't, we haven't done, like, advertising, we don't even have a sign outside still, like, our website's minimal, we don't, you know, we just, we haven't really pushed it, you know, at all, besides word of mouth, so, yeah, we're just, yeah we show up and turn lights on sometimes, if we remember it. Yeah. <laughs> Except... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, except for the random yeah. podcast appearance. But I mean, <laughs> right. But I mean, like, honestly, if, if you're looking to get into the restaurant business, if you're listening 
you're a restaurateur or aspiring restaurateur, I encourage you, and again, because I'm from the e-learning tech space, um, you know, I always go out and do my homework a little bit before, and obviously I've been there, but I still wanted to see your site. Your website is a textbook course in minimalist design that has strong impact. It was almost in <laughs> It was so infuriating. <laughs> I love it because it's brilliant. So many people muck shit up with all these details that you don't need. Here's the thing. You, your menu, too. This is this is what kind of draws me to your... I swear to God, this wasn't meant to be like a fanboy episode of the show, but here I am doing it, so whatever. Um, you know, your menu, it's one page. That's all it ever yeah. should be. It shouldn't be more than that. And, I mean, Ben, that speaks to, I'm sure, your influence there. Um, was, was that intentional? I don't think you're, you know, limited. You could probably go on for pages, but... Was that an intentional choice to go with a one-page menu? Sure. I mean, that, our, our big concept with a one-page was, was more so just how often the menu changed and being able to print out new menus uh, that were accurate uh, cheaply, like with just the one page. We had to print out, you know, like we had a several-page menu and then something changed and we'd want to change it out uh, right away. So we just keep the one page and... Uh, for sure. I mean, honestly, like, I would like not even having a menu and just, like, I would talk to every person that comes in and put whatever they want, but that's not really feasible. It's like, we, meeting in the middle and just doing the one page and having the ability with these guys being great and having the ability for me to just change the menu on a loom and uh, there we you know, just one, one sheet of paper just... It's like super locally focused and everything's from scratch. And it's like, yeah, kind of limits things to, you know. Sure. Yeah, and, and, and that's certainly, you know, a, a, a legitimate, you know, obser observation to make. But, but here's, the thing is, your menu changes so often. And so I want to kind of throw it over to Ben. Um, how does the menu change in, in, in your headspace? Like, what is it that inspires you to create a new menu. Where do you draw that from? Seasonality, I would say, uh, in most, I mean, just having the uh, relationship with the local farmers and producers around here, um, it just really, like, it, it forces me, I never wanted to get dull in uh, deciding on menu items, albeit, you know, delicious menu items, but uh, just Having, having the ability to, to keep things fresh yeah. um, based on what was ability. Right. Yeah, and, and I mean, you never want it to get stale. You you, you want to get, or I, I shouldn't say that in general. I think if you're a chef or an artisan or anything worth your salt, you always want to be pushing that forward. And so, you know, artisan-wise, let's throw it back over to Carl. Um, Carl, obviously, I... I, I I'll go check on the heat he's like working on the pump right now. Oh, he's working on the pump? All right. So, <laughs> so then, Elena, I'll let you pinch hit for Carl here because obviously you, I'm sure you've got influence over what beers go to tap. How, how do you decide wh what goes, what works? You know, is it just based on taste? Is it based on influence? Where do you get that inspiration from? It's, it's all, it's definitely all Carl. I mean, he's, both the kitchen and the brewery, like, they're super resourceful. Like, they're, it's not like they create a menu and they buy what they need for that. It's like they just find what, they just order a bunch of cool stuff and they make from it, you know, what they can. And, um, they, I mean, I think at this point, like, they called the one back to the answer is better, but they've heard probably 250 different recipes so far, you know. So, we grew, you know, check at a time and then have barrels at a time so we have, you know, luxury of doing from big batches and small batches and so there's always a variety but yeah trying to find the staples and it's not totally we, not totally customer you know focus it's more just like you know brewing classical styles like we do well yeah uh, yeah for all interesting yeah. <laughs> no that's all right man <laughs> no so carl the question over to you was you know, I, I, obviously, we've we've come in a couple times now, and the, you know, the beers are. While there are some standards, there are a lot that are different. Um, 
where are you drawing that inspiration from? Is it just in your headspace? Is it what's available? Where do you pull from for that? Kind of a combination of both. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Some are equally premeditated, and others are just sort of, well, I need to make this kind of gear, and this is what I have. And so I just try and turn it into something super special. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. That's that's great though. Like you know, the kitchen buys fifty pounds too much of like ginger root. Hey, we're gonna make a ginger saison. Cool, go. Like that's resourcefulness. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. It just kind of works in my head. I mean, it's a seasonality thing. It's kind of like I don't know. Our tagline is a little bit elliptical. And um, what? <laughs> <laughs> 50 pounds of ginger, that's a shit ton. That's a metric shit ton, actually. Um, but, I mean, I, it's just pretty easy thinking around here. Um, we just kind of make the best of what's available. Yeah, right on. Right on. And, you know, it, 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 it's like watching Kyle's shout-out. It's just fun selling beer and that, you know, really is like, yeah. you know, from different styles. Like, because we were just earlier, like, some people ask, like, oh, what's is the extra panel like a beer or like what's the difference between these three? And it's like it's kind of a hard question to answer because like just just taste the beers and so there's like a lot of people like yeah not thinking they like beer you know and they come in and it's just like a nice it's nice to just get everyone to try it and like they're usually coming for everyone you know yeah this is <laughs> no no go ahead man no I mean we also really try and sort of be like I don't know just think like it's kind of fun to sort of think like okay like. In this class, of this world, like this is a style for this time of year, so like let's try and make a filler one. Um, mm-hmm. Not as like an academic exercise, but just creating a sort of fun thing makes sense. No, 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 and, 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 and it totally makes sense. And I think, like you folks are serving a role. This gets back to the bush pounders and the tree stand. Um, and, and honestly, if I can indulge for a second. That's part of the reason I've been doing the show for five years. It's like, I don't care. I don't, you know, I'm not looking up, monetize, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I don't care about that. What I care about is somebody finally looking at their wife, and maybe they're like 65, and they look at each other and they go, you know, I never thought about going to this restaurant, but somebody on a show said we should do this, and let's go try it. Like, is that not the one of the most exciting things, to see somebody try... Um, a, a, a different type of beer, a different dish for the first time and have them like it. Talk to me about that. All, all, all three of you, because I'm sure in Honesdale that's happened. So tell me how, how like just fulfilling that is to be an educational force in the area. It's, it's phenomenal. I can say uh, from the kitchen side, uh, it, it's amazing. Uh, I working in, in and around uh, Providence, Rhode Island, uh, Hop and Food Town, uh, using some of the same techniques and, and uh, dishes that I, I sort of learned from out there uh, in what was available out here and changing a lot of minds, like blowing a lot of minds. Like, it, it, yeah. it's been awesome. It's so cool to see that people, you know, even just like one of our most like the duck fat fries, uh, that's something that was like, you know, Thought of it. I mean, it's, it's been done a lot of times, a lot of other areas, great out here, and it's just like, a lot of my people love it. Like, yep. There's one on almost three tables. It's amazing. Yeah. And it, it does make me feel very good that we're able to, you know, take some ideas that have been, you know, played around with in other areas and, and stuff that, you know, we've all seen in our own lives and uh, bring them to this area and have them be, you know, uh, grand, uh, you know, like amazing things. It, it's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And uh, I mean, definitely on the food front, talk to me about the beer front then. Um, You know, Carl, Elena, whoever, um, you know, talk to me about the the Bush loyalists who have since turned and appreciate the finer points of Cascade Hops. Yeah, it's kind of funny for me. My father-in-law is like the archetypal, like, Bush, Mm -hmm. you know. Now you love Cezanne, he's like, what does Cezanne have? I mean, that's pretty mind-blowing in that way. Um, you know, but there's a lot of those people. Um, it's surprising, but not. I mean, I don't know. I think if, if we all sort of had more access to it, we'd all love it as much as the people who have yeah. sought the access for it. Um, you know, so we know what it is. And we're, we're, 
happening in the theater um, with passion. Yeah. You know, people people pick up on that and they get on both the queer and queer front, like the same. Yeah. Part that yeah. Oh, got it. I mean, it goes without saying. The passion, as soon as you walk into that place, you know, and, and you know, again, I kind of have to check my perception because my perception is I, I, I know how, you know, places run, how they work, how everything works. But even still, with all that saturation that I've had to the industry, you walk in and you know you're going to get a different feel than Main Street Honesdale is typically gauged for. And so with that in mind, I had my mom try, I think, oh, shit, who was it that was waiting on the table? Was it Summer? I think it might have been Summer. I had my mom try. My, my mother is a Budweiser loyalist, which makes me want to kick her in the teeth. But whatever, you know, to each their own. Um, but I had her try four different beers that night, and all four, she sat back, and she at least gave me a look like, oh, holy shit. I've never had something like that before. And that's something. I mean, when you take 70 years on Earth and you can blow their mind in a second, you you folks are doing amazing shit there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, but the, and, and that, that I think is key. And I think that's an important point you bring up because there's not anyone on that staff that doesn't know their shit inside out and sideways of what you're doing. And that speaks a lot because I've worked in restaurants before and there's people who are just there to get the check and go home. Like you have a family going on there. Fair story. Damn right. Hey, that's actually my company's motto. So that's pretty <laughs> nice. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we're like not like true managers, you know, it's like a, yeah, we're not, we're not corporate, it's cool, like the ones, the, the big jobs are not, I think, yeah, I think. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, like you said, Elena, you, you haven't even really advertised beyond word of mouth and a minimalist website at this point, so I think the sky's the limit, so let's, let's talk about, you know, speaking of, of, of the limit, the alcohol limit that you can put into a beer, um, Throw it back over to Carl. Um, talk to me about the beer that you are proudest of that you've made since being at here and now. What's your baby? Talk to me about nap juice. What is nap juice? Tell everybody what they're looking for there. Super dang, I mean, it was just like, I don't know. It wasn't any better. I mean, it was, I don't know. It was like, I guess if I could make that every day and have some parties, that's what I would love to. Um, yeah. It's just like the, the romance of this like super awesome small batch we did. Um, that, it was just really killer. So I don't. I need to figure out that I need to go to the guy that um, was there. I don't know. Was it? Was it? Nap was, was. Did it make you take a nap, or was it that you could keep it during a nap? <laughs> I think it's more like prescription based. Like you finish the yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's like that. It's sore. I mean, that's one of those things we talk about with people. I mean. It's crazy too. Like they grew across the board, you know, like all different styles. But like the ones that you fly are like nap juice and like the double IPAs and stuff that people can come in for. It and we actually carry it and it's just gone within a day or two. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, yeah. There's also the more sort of strange beer that I've done that I think is kind of cool. Like it makes you with maple sap instead of water. Um, strange herbs and flowers. Um, we like we make a dandy like a super size on the dandelion last year. Ooh. Wow! Yeah, beer is a flower. Um, pretty cool. 
All right. Well, so 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 now the other side of that question, Carl, talk to me about the biggest brewing fuck up you've had there since day one. Oh, he's so much of a pro. He's like, I don't remember ever failing before. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and that's going to happen. I, I mean, of course, it's a very mechanical process. Um, let me throw it over to Ben from the culinary side. Um, what is the dish that you've put out that you are proudest of since starting here and now? <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. Uh, I knew where this was going, and I, I said, I, it's, it's usually, I guess, you go with, like, the standards, like, I'm thrilled that, like, we are doing features that people uh, seem to enjoy, you know, I'm, I'm more of, like, the, the chef that, uh, honestly, cook, I always put myself more of a cook, that just does things that, like, I like to eat, uh, and peach is like one of those big things, such a, a thing that people go all over for it, many different styles and everything. And the fact that we have something just a little bit different that people come and enjoy, I'm, I'm very proud of that. Yeah. Um, but I also like, as we were talking earlier about how much the menu changes, a lot of it is just on like what I'm in the mood to eat uh, on any given week. And I will uh, just sort of like, Try to conceive a dish to, uh, that I'm in the mood for, or, you know, like again, just given like what, what we have available. I and, and honestly, there again, I'm gonna throw that out to all the young culinary students, restaurateurs who are looking to do great things with their talents and whatnot. Cook what you love, because if you cook anything else, people will see through your bullshit. Is that a fair statement, Ben? I think too many people try to muscle that forward, and they just fall flat almost every time they do it. I think I love like Carl's uh, like about the passion of just like the, the best thing about what we do is like that's what's even hard for us to like get down and talk about what we do is because we're so focused on just doing what our hearts yeah. want to do and like our passion sort of dictates. And it's weird to just kind of like conceive it to any one like favorite or, or any just like aspect of it like we're lucky enough uh frankly for like elena and and steve, like her cousin steve and carl and my job and just like we, we have the ability to just do uh what our passions are and have a vehicle to you know to put it out and give it to people and that's that's just what we've been doing for a while, and, and it seems to be working, and 
that's what's so great about it. That, that's what uh, brings us here today is how to use how we're open. That's why yeah. we have this. I mean, that's... Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I mean, people who've listened to the show for five years, I apologize in advance for doing so. Um, you know, that this has been a passion project and people know that people know that episode 50, I soaked every cost involved, raised $1,500 for the hungry in the area. Perfect. That's all I ever want to do with this is educate. And I almost feel like, you know, on a very entrepreneurial front on your end, Elena Carl Ben, you know, that that's what you're doing in the area. And I think that's why it warms my heart and why I wanted to have you folks on uh, so strongly. So Ben, don't think you're getting out of this. So we talked about maybe a favorite dish and whatever you couldn't, there had to have been one dish that you put out and it was just not good. Was there? Yeah. Oh boy. That list is a lot longer. Uh... (laughs) At least he's honest folks. He doesn't like any of his dishes, though. Like, I feel like, yeah, that would be a lot long, because there, there are always these ideas that come out, like, not as I wanted, and which makes them, like, horrible to me. Um, but I would say, like, our attempt at ramen uh, was, was, like, a, that is, like, such a, so that's a dish that, like, I love. Like, Elaine and I love. A lot of people love it. It's getting very hot. It's been hot for a while. And, yep. Uh, it, it's still the big thing. Like I thought that I could, and it was, it was just like you can't mess with the people that do exactly the wrong. Like they're just ramen shops, and, you know, in New York yeah. City, it's like all, all over the country. These uh, true ramen shops that like make the noodles and do it. And like we made an attempt at it, and it, it's great. It's serviceable. Like it's, it's good. It's a good broth, and you know. These are new that we make ourselves, but I was pretty disappointed because it's, it's nothing like the true uh, ramen dishes that uh, we've all had. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, a lot of us have had. Uh, that, that was one of yeah. That, that was oh, one of the yeah. yeah it was pretty good, but yeah. That one I wish I didn't have. Uh, like I had had tried because I I, I like the. Uh, Stuff I get better than the stuff I make. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a reason why. Like, it, it, an entire restaurant is a ramen shop. You know, you, you don't you don't venture outside of it. You don't go beyond it. That's your lane, and and I I can respect that. Um, so well, that good good. That's 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 very honest of you to be sure. Um, Elena, let me kick it back over to you. Um, obviously the food and drink industry, very trend driven. Um, and beer, definitely craft beer for sure, has has been a major mover and shaker in the industry. What do you think is gonna be the next big push in craft beer, if, if you had to guess? And then Carl, you know, obviously we can kick it over to you. And Ben, you know, we can talk about the, you know, culinary trends influencing beer too. But I wanna start with Elena, you know, beer. Uh, craft beer specifically. What's what's next? What's big? Well, I don't know. We talk trends. Like, it's one of the cool things I think about being in Hollywood is I think it's a very non-trend town. Yeah. And I think, too, just like I said earlier, I said, I think one thing, too, just like walking into this and like trying to be a brewery, but then turning into like a local restaurant, you know, mistakenly in some ways. And um, I don't think. It, it, the terms don't, in some ways don't matter. I think, like, I guess, like, too, just, like, part of our focus is just, like, like, they were saying earlier, just, like, you know, a lot of passion goes in, like, we're lucky to do what we like, love to do, like, we're lucky to employ a good amount of people. I, you know, we've been in Los Angeles and had a lot of local things from a lot of local people, and, and you know, the mm-hmm. each too, just, like, want to, like, you know, just promote, like, a more local, sustainable economy in town, so yeah. the trends don't really... But I don't know, beer trends, it seems like... I don't think it's that hard to take this area as much as, you know, other areas. Um, things, too, just like more like wild beers, I think, are getting out there. But like I said, it's just it's funny, too, just like being in the bubble of home sale, like having really ventured out kind of the and just kind of been, been here and like crushing it here, I guess. Well, you have a. You, you, yeah, you gotta have fun the beers, man. I mean, yeah, I mean, you have a wonderful, uh, definite advantage, uh, to be sure, because it's almost like. The Honesdale, and I mean this lovingly, you know, they're they're a couple of years off the bubble. 
So you can go and you can experience the bubble in a Philadelphia or some other major metropolitan area and then bring it back to Honesdale and it's introduced and it's brand new and it's wonderful and it uptakes almost instantly. Fair statement? Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, actually, I mean, even some of the beers, like, I kind of think, really, like, whole thing Savons are kind of probably the next thing. I think it's kind of cool because I think that's, personally, I think that's, like, one of Carl's, like, best, I think his best beers when he wears the Savon, so, yeah. if you think of beer, it's, it's funny because it's, like, not really a trend, it's just, like, something that's been around for a while, but it might become more popular. I think, too, just, like, when people, at least, like, people come into the brewery, like, yeah. sometimes they try to milk their for Savon because, like, they think it's, like a conventional and like a commercial stays on and a little bit more strong and it's a very specific, you know, that that just stays on taste. So I think the ones that Harbors are like, you know, much more neutral and yeah. just fundamentally awesome. So yeah. yeah. That's my role, but, oh for you know, sure. I mean And so and Yeah, definitely. For for those in the audience who are unfamiliar with the style of the Saison, let's kick it over to Carl. Carl, um thirty seconds or less overview of what a Saison is. I mean, we started our project from the research for a gas type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, starting, I mean, because what it was is like farmers things that they had on hand and making a beer with it. Uh, yep. <laughs> I guess that's my interpretation of it. Um, I mean, so that's kind of how I think of it. Um, you know, married with the right yeast and water profiles and hot Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, yeah, I don't know how I think of it. Well, I think I'm sure some is going to leave that comment in the thing, like, haven't you read Farmhouse Sales? It's like, yes, I have. <laughs> I love it. Hey, listen, if you want to leave comments, that means you're listening. I'm game. Go. <laughs> well, no, I mean, that's, that's what a Saison is historically. It's a farmhouse ale. It's meant to be... Uh, I, I always envision, and Carl, correct me if I'm wrong, I always envision, you know, straw, hay in a barn when I'm drinking a Saison. That always strikes yeah. out to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, just, I, I always think of the work aspect of the farmer just because I'm kind of restless. Yeah. I think myself was jumping in it's my question for that. Uh, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of the equivalent. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I mean, the flip side, so if we say Saison is is going to be the next big beer, let's let's turn that over on its head. What, what beer, beer trend, are you ready to see die a fiery death, like, and just go the fuck away? What are you done with? Yes! <laughs> well, I, mean, I don't know, it's like kind of hard, because we're, I guess all the... Uh, Sort of semi random, we're going to throw a whole bunch of shit in this year, sort of thing. Um, and uh, we were also talking about the ridiculous of names, which we're not really much to argue with, but um, I think we were talking about like a double imperial session IPA. Oh, God. Like, you know, and we're not like, oh, <laughs> that's like Ben's title. He's the double assistant director executive. Jesus Christ, what are you? Do what you're supposed to do. We were talking the other day and I was looking at you and it's like this, that, this, that, that, this, the other thing. And it's kind of like, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, who knows who those people who knows who those people like, it's okay. But, um, I hate that. Uh, I'm with you. I, I'm, I'm with you completely. Double, double solid third session. Nugget Nectar IPA double removed twice added. What? What are you? That doesn't even make sense. Um, <laughs> so, so Ben, talk to me because obviously now you know food wise. Obviously, seasonally you're you're influenced, but there's definite trends coming out of the kitchen. What's what's something you're doing that you'd like to see catch hold? Um, I can think of one, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it after you give your answer. But like, what's what's something that? Uh, uh, can you give me a hint? A, a hint as far as oh oh as far as what you're doing. Um, all right, it was all right. Ready? It was white whipped, and there were crackers with it. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> 
Yeah, the bat. I love, I love bat. I love animal bat. I adore that. I have to tell you, dude. Like, anymore. I would say, like, even back to my last conversation about ramen, that was like my favorite thing. Uh, there's a lot of it. What we've been talking about lately is uh, broth, like bone broth. Yeah. And for uh, like. The dawn of time, and like bone broth, animal bone broths are very beneficial for the human. Yeah. Uh, and it seems now that like people are just realizing that, and uh, there's places dying, you know, just like stop, like what we know in the culinary world as just like the lifeblood uh, of our dishes, in that like in stock. Yeah. Uh, are fetching like an insane price as like, you know, Starbucks cups or just can go cups of bone broth and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yep. so that's, that's a trend that, um, really, I, I forget where we're going with it, but really pisses me off that people are now just getting into that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, 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 no. That's, that's spot on, dude. Because honestly, my, my wife decided she was going to do this whole 30 thing. And I look and I'm like, oh, fuck, broths are a big portion of this. And so I started breaking down like gallons at a time. And I'm like, this isn't that hard. And at, at one point, I forget why I stopped making it. And she's like, oh, I have to go out to the store. And I looked at the receipt for a little like mason jar of it. I'm like, get the fuck out. How much did we just pay for that? Yeah. yeah it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like we have, if anyone, uh, any of your listeners uh, are, are buying those things, um, I have them come to here and out for company, and I will gladly give them uh, the same amount for a quarter of the price. There you go. Listen to that. We're wheeling and dealing here on the show. <laughs> you heard it. It, it. It's on the air. It must be true. <laughs> Big news. Big news. Big reveal. It's like because just getting back to technique and just yeah. like with my past and everything like that is just like that is just like there needs to be stock uh, in every kitchen like and and really well made stock and that's what people yeah. are just saying you know we have uh, that's like a concentration for us of, of dialing in on those old school like techniques and and just essentials in the kitchen yeah. Um, and it does translate to like all of our food, just having you know those those standard things that uh, you're taking you know byproduct of something that you're making money off of and, and selling uh, and, and turning it into something else, and uh, that's just such a standard thing. And I don't it's the fact that it's like a trend and people are just trying to make it hot right now is kind of ridiculous. So I mean, Ben, humor my dad joke for a minute. Do, do, are, are you trying to say you need stock options? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna let that one. I'm gonna let that one go for a little bit. I'm gonna let that one just settle. Yeah, that was my dad joke. I'm sorry. I apologize in advance. That was horrible. I should be ashamed of myself. So no, I, 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 I totally agree with you on that. Has here and now ever considered a stock infused ale? Yes. Yes. You are better. Yes. Yes. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. If 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 Rogue if Rogue Brewing can do a Chipotle infused ale, I think you could probably go with a stock infused ale, wouldn't you think? No, I mean, you know, the stock has fat. Yeah, like the stock has the fat. Uh, I mean, like, we have to get it very, like, the stock to just get them, a lot of the flavors in the back. I mean, you can have a stock to the south, maybe you can try to get it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Hey, speaking of brunch. <laughs> speaking of brunch. You guys are doing a Sunday brunch, aren't you? Correct? Yes. Yes. We are going to do brunch. What are we doing brunches? Brunches. Brunches. Brunch. Brunch. Are you coming to brunch, I I would love to come to brunch. I'm a big fan of the brunch because I think the brunch the brunch heals the Saturday 
induced hangover, to be fair. Um, you know, that's, that's what brunch is made for. If anybody's telling you otherwise, they're mistaken. So brunch is a wonderful excuse to middle of the day drink and call it a meal. Yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> and and like you all are currently doing that now, or is that starting in the near future? February tenth is our first brunch. Seb tenth, you heard it here. Two ten. Yeah. Get out to here and now. Start doing brunch. And then yeah, keep going after those every every weekend. Brunch. Absolutely, absolutely. And then there's this uh, here and now is beer and cows. What's that about? <laughs> Apparently not long enough based on the laughter, but go ahead. <laughs> on a real note, on a real note, we have we do work with a lot of uh, uh, several uh, local uh, producers of beef. Uh, who are like good friends of mine, uh, good friends of the of the brewery. Um, it's like working on a concept where these farmers can uh, help supplement the cost of feed for their animals with with spanker, like the spanker in from the brewing process. Yeah. Um, and and luckily, like have the skills and the capabilities here to uh, break down. You know those animals, and and use like large cuts of, of beef, and do this awesome uh, event that is the best sounding name of all time. <laughs> yeah. Well, how how is that? How does that get any better? So I'm going to call dibs right here. As far as a live broadcaster MC, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring. I will drive up to Honesdale for it. Got it. Ooh, really? Done. I'm in. I'm bringing my banner. We're in. I. There we go. My my second big event. I did Hudson Valley Brewing with uh, Grill Bitch from Kitchen Confidential, and now I'm doing uh, Here and Now in Honesdale. So lock it in, kids. Lock it in. Um, all right. So so group question. Talk to me. What's the five year? What is the five year plan? Obviously, it, you guys are successful beyond probably expectations. Honestly, like it seems like it's really kind of a dream come true to a certain extent. Uh, where do you go from here? What are you doing? Five years, we are all going to be in the paradise of our each uh, personal... Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> and never talk to each other. <laughs> Does that mean Ben and Elena, too? What happened there? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. But I mean, Elena, talk to me. I mean, it, it, it is it, is the goal to keep doing what you're doing? Because it just seems like a lot of fun, to be honest. Uh, yeah, it just seems like a lot of fun. Keep on keeping on. There you go. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of fun to be had, so you know, a lot of work and the business set up and yeah. on the same I mean, now that it's running, I mean, why, why, why mess with a good thing? Pretty much. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Damn, str I've heard that before, actually. Um, that's that's a. Uh, that's a solid way to be. And, you know, I really hope five years from now, you know, I'm still coming up there. I'm still, you know, tapping in there because I, I adore everything you're doing. You'll have a house and home sale in five years. I think, what's your five-year plan? Oh, Jesus Christ. You're the second episode in a row to turn it around on me here. I'm like, I don't know what the show's doing. Uh, but what's my five years? I don't know. Maybe in a home sale. Because honestly, the way it's going and the way everything is kind of sprouting up, I feel like, and, and you know, here we go, hat in the ring, one eight four three one, cultural, artistic epicenter, uh, for the area in in five years. I I really believe that to be true because I think there's so much New York, New Jersey influence that it stays strong, and yet there's a creative kind of undercurrent that stays with it from the locals. So I I, I don't know. I I, I mean that's kind of what. Our secret epicenter name is all about. Um, 
we were pretty strong on this place. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. It's a, it, it, I mean, it really is truly amazing what you folks have done in two small years, and I only think it's going to get better uh, from here. So we'll all be staying tuned for sure. Let's talk afters real quick. A couple more questions. Um, I'm standing in your kitchen, and you can say, you, you know, brew room, kitchen, whatever. What music do I hear? that you're, you're all listening to. Now, I know this because I was just in with my producer, uh, what, two weeks ago, Elena? Yeah, a couple weeks. So, I mean, I know what I'm listening to, but talk to me about the music that you guys listen to when you're doing what you do. Sir, it's a bit, that's a great question, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I've been at this a while. Go ahead. Yeah, we're going to say just alone in the kitchen. Uh, I happen to have um, uh, a great, like, very, very proud of the guys that I have, great team and everything, ridiculous choices of music. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, when I work and in the kitchen, hopefully you're hearing uh, some like uh, the Grateful Dead, Fish, uh, Spafford, some like jammy, uh, uh, hippie music kind of thing, because yeah. that's, that's what, that's my case, but I've got like a, the hardcore guy. The Nickelback guy. Who's the Nickelback guy? Fire him, please. Yeah, I know. I do. Well, you know, he, he works so great that it's, it's really impossible to just take him out with musical choice. But, uh, but he's a Nickelback guy. That's easy. <laughs> because none of us can, like, we all, we all rally against him and, and his musical choices. But we, we just have a lot of different musical choices in the kitchen. Uh, but luckily... Uh, I'm the chef, and it's a lot of like jammy, uh, just sort of smooth yourself and uh, cooking food while you're jamming out to some fish and Grateful Dead. Um, and then there's, they all have their own. I know Carl would like to talk about the music choice in the brewery. I didn't say that. <laughs> so, what's going on in the uh, brew part there, Carl? Um, it turns out who gets to the stereo first. Um, I mean, my assistant gets in earlier. It's democratic. <laughs> <laughs> I usually, I try not to pick points, so I let him play in Steely Dan or Pearl Jam. Um, which is, it's hard to swallow sometimes. It's a strange reference to Steely Dan and that. Um, because <laughs> I had to tell him what Steely Dan was a reference to. So cool, man. So much more uh, just serious and eclectic. We try to keep our own, you know, influence in this place and on every level. Yeah. But we sort of leave it up to honestly whoever's uh, closest to the to habit over there. Whoever gets to it first, you know, in terms of our front of the house or you know whoever's Sean and uh, whoever's you know over there will just put on. A different playlist, and it, and it could be any, you know, just sort of across the board. Anytime you come in here, it could be something, something yeah, pretty different. Yeah. But we're pretty particular in our uh, kitchen and brewery. Uh, a lot of hours, uh, you need some noise, and it's that uh, constant battle of like who gets the, the time to play exactly what they want. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Because sometimes other people have put on like music you reference of this being like one of your electronic years ago. Like, I listen to things here now that I bought here. I'm like, two, three, two, three, three, three. <laughs> 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 it's like, oh yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> nice. How about you, Elena? If you show up and no one else is there, what do you put on? That uh, was my favorite thing. <laughs> I usually feel with that. We have a lot of live music that comes through here, though. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, and that 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 was actually my follow up to that. Talk to me about uh, who's who's coming in uh, for the month of February. Do you have any uh, any new artists coming in? I, I 
and all you need like you know, <laughs> like and water. Actually, no, we did. We were trying to get ahead. We actually gave us that word schedule and talked about it later. But it just it really doesn't even matter who it is. It's more just like when we do, you know, time stuff is just when we good music. Yeah. Stuff. Definitely. And is there a specific night of the week? Usually Saturdays and afternoons is like normally, but we try to like mix in like a, a jazz night here and there, here and now. Oh, I love that. Oh, here and now, here and there. Love it. Love it, love it. No, all good, like all good, like relatively local music and usually just trying to like add atmosphere to the place, like not really, you know. But every, every now and then we jam out pretty hard for so. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Love that. Love that. Um, I'm going to actually skip a couple of the afters question again, just because we've got, you know, three folks on and I want to touch on the core question of, of, of the show to a certain extent. Um, have any of you seen the book, my last supper by Melanie Denea? Oh my God. All right. So I'm buying a copy for the restaurant. You can keep it behind the bar, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, Melanie Denea is a world renowned uh, photographer from NYC. And uh, she did a book, My Last Supper, with 50 famous chefs and asked them the same question across the board. And uh, it's actually the inspiration for the show. And uh, she did a follow-up to it, actually, with uh, Marco Pierre White on the cover, uh, the next course. He's holding a uh, large French round in front of his face because, obviously, you know, he's too cool for the room. But anyway, um, both books address the same series of questions that center around your last meal. Your ticket's getting punched tomorrow. You've got tonight. What's your last meal? What are you drinking? Who's there? What's playing and why? And so I'm going to send this around the room, all three of you. And I'm going to start with Ben, actually. Ben. Oh, ah, ha, ha, your last supper, buddy. Talk to me about it. <clears throat> you know, boy, man. So fish is there. Ben, fish is there. All right. Okay. I mean, we're playing uh, my favorite song, which I'm not going to get into because that would take even longer. And I'm going to buy these guys time here. Look at you uh, being a team player. Look at you. I'm definitely going to go with uh, Chicken Tiamat. It's probably one of my favorite uh, meals that I could have at any time of the day is a great chicken Caesar salad. Love it. Uh, I, I just like with the you know, and even like moving out here and get like the local romaine, uh, and like local flavor and just like a like a really perfect homemade Caesar dressing, uh, definitely would be in there. Definitely. Uh probably Taco Bell. I love it. Oh god, I love that. Real tough chicken burrito. Yeah, I have to have like the the representation of that food. Uh, and then I finish it uh, with my all-time favorite snack. Uh, it's like a really salty, hard pretzel, hard sourdough pretzel, like the one in like the plastic like tube, and uh, Harbor Farms raw milk. Uh, I I could eat that. I I would probably like that would be my last meal because I I would gorge myself on it. So I ate too many uh, pretzels and chipped it down with. Uh, Harlow Farms raw, raw milk uh, until I died. I, that's my favorite salty snack. Uh, alcohol wise, uh, any uh, of Carl's sour beers, because I think they're all phenomenal. Uh, he doesn't like to brew them because it takes too long and it would fuck up the other beers and stuff like that. <laughs> and the times they compromise and stuff that. Uh, like, it goes so long that it gets that sort of tartness, bitterness, I fucking love them, so I would uh, fill myself in a vat of Carl Sour Beer uh, and pretzels and milk. I, I love that. L listen, listen, to you other two, <laughs> to the other two sandbagging, and to every guest who has ever been on the show before, you lost. You just lost. Ben just won the fucking game. I don't know that there has ever been a better <laughs> explanation of indulging yourself. And the fact that the elements were so kind of like, I don't know, a hurdy-gurdy, like disjointed almost. But like, here's Fish playing in the background. He's drinking sour beer with raw milk. How is that going to end up? Uh, 
<laughs> with Taco Bell and pretzels. I'm 41 and going, Jesus Christ, I'm not going to want to wake up tomorrow, which I guess is the point, right? So there you go. All right, let's throw it over to Elena. Go ahead. It's to Elena. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Uh, I probably take a Bob of the 116, Jerry Ross, Island of Dale, and a Pittsburgh style Monica. That was way too easy for you. I don't like how that rolled off your tongue that quickly. That's disturbing. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough, mispreparedness. All right, Carl, go ahead, buddy. Uh, I think whatever my kids would want to eat. <laughs> I love it. I love it, though. It, it, it's simple. And so let me wrap up. Here it is, the last question, the simplest and yet most complex. What is food and drink to you in a single word? And we'll go in reverse order. Carl, go ahead. Wait, could you expand on the question? <laughs> now, what is food and drink to you in one word. What does it mean to you? <laughs> I can't type that. You're right. Fuck, okay. I got it. <laughs> um, no, I wish. Um, <laughs> uh, radness, I guess? I like that. That's, I like that a lot, actually. Um, that's weird. Yeah, that's just, a, yeah, that's my word. I love it. I love it. Elena. Did I win? Yeah, I'm pretty bad. <laughs> it was good. It was good. I appreciate it. I, 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 I'll tell you what, though. Honestly, Carl, in, in 94 episodes, that's a unique answer. So, that's doing something. It's tying for second, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Elena, what is it to you in a single word? Uh, perseverance. I love Jesus Christ. All right, Carl, she just beat you. Um, Time for third now. <laughs> <laughs> You're only in a group of three, Carl. Sorry to break what that down. What color metal do you get great <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ben, what is it to you in a single word, buddy? Passion. <laughs> oh, that's been used before, but did you say moist? <laughs> oh, shit. I'm going to stick with passion. Fine. Stay with passion. Stop it. Don't say that word again. We're good. All right. All right. Cool. Well, hey, uh, here and now, Brewing Gang, goddamn, it has been an immense pleasure. Uh, Hope to do it again. Hope to do it live. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, look at that. You've got everything. Soup to nuts, as they say. Soup to nuts. Um, you are located at 645, 649 Main Street in Honesdale, Pennsylvania. Uh, anyone interested in calling here or now and getting set up with a table with a growler or several can call 570-253-0700. Check out the Facebook and Instagram presence, which they keep multiply loaded at uh, many times. So again, folks, thank you so much. Like you guys have absolutely been a treat. I love it to death, and I wish you only the best going forward. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. You got it, gang. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode number ninety-four of the Course Grind Podcast. With me this evening, the illustrious trio: Elena, Carl, and Ben. From Here and Now Brewing in Honesdale, Pennsylvania, 645 to 649 Main Street. Be sure to check them out. My producer this evening has been Johnny Leland Robinson, a.k.a. the Reverend Johnny Lamoria. Be sure to check out our revisited, revived, reinvigorated Cinematic Pig's Feet podcast. And uh, next episode will be 95, the year of graduate of high school. There's nothing more to say about it than that, so stay tuned. <laughs>